Good morning. It's sunglasses day, but I'm not going to be wearing them when I read to you because it's hard for me to see that way. But another very important day is World um, Autism Awareness Day. And that means to make yourself aware of what autism is and to be kind to people that have autism and to include them in all the things that we try to do and our activities. And um, I just want you to think about people with autism and how they are very special friends for us. And our book today, uh, we're continuing to read Islands of the Blue Dolphin. It's our chapter book by Scott O'Dell. And I'll be reading chapter six today. So after Kim Key had gone one moon, he began to watch for his return. Every day, someone went to the cliff to scan the sea. Even on stormy days, we went. And on days when fogs surrounded the island, during the day, there was always a watcher on the cliff, and in each night, as we sat around our fires, we wondered if the next sun would bring him home. But the spring came and went, and the sea was empty. Kim Ki did not return. There were few storms that winter, and rain was light and ended early. This meant that we would need to be careful of water. In the old days, the spring sometimes ran low, and no one worried. But now everything seemed to cause alarm. Many were afraid that we would die of thirst. There were other things more important to ponder, said Matasipa, who had taken McKinpey's place. Matasipa meant the Aleuts, for it was now the time of the year when they had come before. Watchers on the cliff began to look for the red sails, and a meeting was held to plan what we would do if the Aleuts came. We looked, we, we lacked the men to keep them from landing or to save our lives if they attacked us, which we were certain they would. Plans were therefore made to flee as soon as their ship was sighted. Food and water stored in the canoes, and these were hidden on the rocks at the south end of the island. The cliffs were steep here and very, very high, but we wove a stout rope of, we wove a stout rope of bull kelp and fastened it to rocks at the top of the cliff so that it hung to the water. As soon as the Aleut ship was sighted, we would all go to the cliff and let ourselves down one at a time. We would then leave in our canoes for the island of Santa Catalina. Although the entrance of Coal Cove was too narrow for a ship to pass through safely at night, men were sent there to watch the cove from dusk till dawn, besides those who were watching during the day. Shortly afterwards, a night of fine moon, one of the men came running back to the village. Everyone was asleep. But his cries quickly awakened us. The Aleuts, he shouted, the Aleuts! It was the news we expected. We were prepared for it, yet there was much fear in the village. Matasep strode from a hut to hut, telling everyone to be calm and not to lose time packing things that would not be needed. I took my skirt of yucca fiber, however. I had spent many days making it, and it was very pretty and also my otter cape. Quietly we fled our village along the trail that led toward the place where our canoes were hidden. The moon was growing pale and there was a faint light in the east, but a strong wind began to blow. We had gone no farther than half a league when we were overtaken by the men who had given them warning. We spoke, he spoke to Matasip, but we all gathered around to listen to him. I went back to the cove after I gave the alarm, he said. When I got there, I could see the ship clearly. It is beyond the rocks that guard the harbor. It is a smaller ship than the one that belongs to the Aleuts. The sail was white instead of red. Could you see anyone? No, it is not the same ship which w was here last spring. No, Madison was silent pondering on the news. Then he told us to go to where the canoes were and wait for him, for he was going back. 
It was light now, and we went quickly over the dunes to the ledge of the cliffs and stood there while the sun rose. The wind grew cold, but fearing that those ships would see the smoke, we did not start a fire, though we had a meal to cook for breakfast. Instead, we ate a small quantity of dried abalone, and afterwards my brother Ramo climbed over the cliff. No one had been down the rocks since the canoes were hidden, so we, we did not know whether they were still safe or not. While he was gone, we saw a man running across the dunes. It was Ninko carrying a message. He was sweating in spite of the cold, and he stood trying to catch his breath. We all waited, urging him to talk, but his face was happy, and he knew that he brought good news. Speak, everyone said in a chorus. I have been running for more than a league, he said. I cannot talk. You are talking, someone said. Speak, Nanko, speak, cried the voices. Nanko was having fun with this. He knew he threw out his chest and took a deep breath. He looked around at the circle of faces as he did not understand why everyone was staring at him. The ship, he said at last, saying the words slowly, does not belong to our enemies, the Aleuts. There are white men on this ship and they have come from a place where Kimki went when he left our island. Has Kimki returned? The old man broke in. No, but it is he who saw the white men and told them to come here. What do they look like? Olape asked. Are there boys on the ship? Asked Rambo. Rainbow, who had come back with his mouth full of something. Everyone seemed to be talking at once. Nanko made his face stern, which was hard for him to do because his mouth had been cut in a battle with the Aleuts, and ever since, it always looks like he was smiling. He held up his hand for silence. Silence. The ship has come for one reason, he said, to take us away from Kalats. To what place, I asked. It was good news that the ship did not belong to the Aleuts, but where would the white men take us? I did not know to what place, he said. Kimki knows, and he asked the white men to take us there. Saying no more, Nenko returned back and followed, and we followed him. We were fearful of where we were going, yet we were happy too. Okay, so tomorrow will be chapter seven, and we'll read along tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm thinking tomorrow um, is our workout day. So if you want to wear your sweats, that's what I'll be wearing. Um, tomorrow we'll dress up in our sweats and I will read to you then. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.